All right, welcome back. And in today's session, we're going to be looking at the Aster Plot. Now, the Aster Plot is a take on a pie chart or a donut chart. It's really more of a donut chart, and it has a little bit of a special nature to it. What this allows you to do is have more than one measure visualized on this type of chart. So the different measures that you can have, the first measure is shown as the depth of the slice. So that's the black one here has the largest depth. It also happens to have the largest width as well. So there's, there's two measures. The first measure controls the depth. The second measure controls the width. And we'll see an example of that here in a few moments. Now, this one is developed by Microsoft. Let's go ahead and take a look look at where to go download it, uh, how to import it, and then how to use it. All right, so once you go to the Visuals Custom Gallery, which you can find by going to visuals.powerbi.com, you'll scroll down a bit until you find the Aster Plot. Go ahead and select that and download the visual. Uh, you can then tell it you can also download some samples that Microsoft has provided if you'd like, and that way you can take a look at some completed examples already. Once you've downloaded it, take it back over to Power BI. So I'm going to go back over to my Power BI instance that I have open already, my Power BI desktop instance, and we're going to start by bringing in some data that I have. And I have some sales data that be represented on our Aster plot today. So I'm going to go up to the Get Data section here on the top of the ribbon, and I'll select Get Data. And the file type that we're going to use is an Excel file type, so I'll select Excel. And then I'll go find the data source that we're using today. The data source is going to be called Category Sales, which of course you can download from the class files. All right, so I'll hit Open. So once we've selected our file that we're going to use, the category sales, I'll go ahead and select the sales spreadsheet that's part of that workbook and select load. There's no edits we need to make to this data. It's already in pretty good shape. It's a small data set. So I'll hit load to bring this into Power BI. Now, once I bring this into Power BI, I also need to actually import the custom visual. Now, to import the custom visual, you'll go to the visualization section over here. You'll click on the little ellipses that says import from file. You'll hit continue or hit import here to continue and actually find the file that you want to import. And you'll go underneath the custom visuals folder that you've previously hopefully downloaded already. In this case, this is where I'm storing mine, uh, but I have the Aster plot located right here. You should have just downloaded a few moments ago. I'll select open and now I will have, when I hit OK, the Aster plot available to me here to start to use. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, get it inside the design surface. I'm going to make this take up a little bit more space so we can see it really well also. All right, so the Aster plot's pretty simple. All I have to do is bring in some kind of category of data. In this case, my field is actually called category. And then I can bring in a certain measure. So I'm going to start by just bringing in one measure here to begin with. And when you bring in this single measure, that shows you in the Aster plot that each of the different categories of data that you have take up an even amount on the donut chart, basically. So you can see, of course, there's a hole in the middle that says the name of the field that we're looking at. That's the category field. And then the measure is really, the first measure is controlling the depth of each of these. So how, uh, how, how deep do each of these go is what it's controlling here. So you can see the value that's purple here has the most depth to it. The tires and tubes are the ones that we sell the most quantity of. And you can see that's followed here by either road bikes or it looks like bottles and cages are both pretty close here. So again, the first measure controls the depth, how, uh, how much depth this takes up. This is kind of like the... Uh, the measurement between the center to the edge of the pie or the donut is what's controlling the first measure. The second measure, if I select a second one here like sales amount, controls the width. Now you can see it's a very significant change here to the chart. Let me show that again. If I uncheck sales amount, you can see again, each of these have an equal width. Every one of them has the exact same width. But as soon as I bring in that second measure, that controls the width or the sweep here of that part of the chart. So for example, we saw just a moment ago that mountain bikes was pretty shallow. We didn't have a ton of mountain bike sales as far as quantity, but the sales amount, how much money we're making from mountain bikes is far greater than other items that we're selling. So you can see here the little tool tip that pops up. I'll show you how you can actually add data labels and things like that on here in a few moments. But you can control both the depth and the width of each of the categories that appears here. And, and again, now they're not all the exact even amount of width between them. As soon as I bring in that second measure, the width is controlled by, in this case, sales amount. All right, now that's pretty much it to the chart, but let's take a look at some of the customizations that you can make to the chart itself. You'll find that under the format paintbrush here. And underneath the format paintbrush, there's a couple things that are quite interesting, I think. If you scroll down a little bit here, you'll find you can add in an outer line. So if I turn on outer line over here, you'll notice that it actually adds a line that goes all the way around. You can control the thickness of that line if you want. I'll increase that to, uh, let's say, 5. 
And I can increase that to 5 here, not 15. There we go. And it gives me a good line that shows all the way around here. It shows me very clearly the width and how different the widths are. Now, before I turned on that line, if I took out sales amount for a moment, you'll notice very clearly that each of these has the exact same width between them until I add in that second measure. That's when you can really tell the difference between the, uh, the width on each of the categories of data here. So that's the outer line. I'm actually going to turn off the outer line. I do think it's kind of interesting here to be able to see that. So that way you can really tell the difference between the width of each of these. I'll turn that back off now. All right, the other things that you'll find in here as well are the detail labels. You can turn on detail labels here. And when you turn on detail labels, you can also control the size of the labels. So I can increase and bump up this, the text size there a bit if I'd like. Uh, you can also do things like change the color of the labels if you wanted to. I can make them more of a pure black if I wanted to. And you can also control the actual units of measure here. Right now it's showing 957.73K, uh, 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 but you can adjust that here where it says display units. You can adjust that and change that to do none, and then it'll just show the true value there. Ah, right, you can also do things like this. So rather than just deal with the detail labels, I can also come up here to the category, or excuse me, the center label. And the center label allows you to change the text that appears in the middle here. Now, it does stay as saying the word category. If you want to change the word category to something else, you need to actually change the name of the field here as of right now. Uh, but you can change the color of it. If you want it to not be that black, you can change it to something like more of a blue if you prefer. You do have the ability to change that here. I'm going to leave it as a black. Uh, you can also add in a legend. Right now, you'll notice there is no legend, so you don't really know what the slices of the aster plot are until you hover above it and get a tooltip. But if you'd actually like to see a legend on here, you can turn on a legend by flipping on on the legend property here. And that'll add a legend up in the top by default, but you can shift that legend around if you'd like. I can increase the text size up a little bit, and I could also change the position of that legend here from being in the top right now to move it over to the, let's say, the left center. And so I can add that over here so it's a little easier to see. You can increase the size of that if you wanted to so it's very clear. And now we've added in that legend here so we can very clearly see each of the categories uh, that we're looking at here. So what is, uh, what is the blue one here? You can see that's bottles and cages, and it's much clearer to see. Now the rest of the properties are ones that you have in all of the other visualizations here. So you can add a border around it if you want. I'm going to leave the border off. You can tell it which position you want it to appear at on the screen. You can lock the aspect ratio, add a background color if you wanted to. You guys have seen uh, how to do that a number of times now. I'll go ahead and add a background color in here and make a little fade to it. Uh, you could also add in a title to it. If you'd like to change the title up to the top, you can uh, adjust the title right here. Right now it's called Quantity and Sales by Category. You can change that to just Sales by Category if you wanted to. And that way it's a little bit more to your liking. You may want to bump up the text size of that and maybe shift it into the center so it's a little bit more obvious. And there we go. That's a pretty good looking chart. So the Astro Plot's pretty simple. Again, you, you saw there were several properties you can adjust to format it. But uh, it's pretty straightforward. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I look forward to talking to you in our next session.